Being part of the MIT Space Systems Laboratory provides incredible opportunities. I don't think there's very many places that you can actually work to send your algorithms and control schemes to space to test. To be able to interact with the International Space Station, it's a remarkable opportunity. Space Systems it encompasses any field of science or engineering that you can think of. We work with computers, with mechanics, uh, with thermal engineering, propulsion. We specialize, but we can't ignore or leave out uh, any of the subsystems. You always have something new you know, and challenging to work on, even if you've done something once, but the next time you do it, it's a, it's a little bit different. And the environment and space is not one that's really um, easy to work with. So there's always um, you know, problems to solve, and I think that's what you know, I love about it the most. The Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics at MIT is in the School of Engineering. And here we really cover two bases. One is uh, airplanes, aeronautics, as well as spacecraft. So uh, what I like to think of is we're engineering, but we defy gravity. You can work with the International Space Station. You can build and fly your own UAVs. You work with astronauts. Uh, they really come out of their education now with a full experience of impacting the aerospace field. The MIT Space Laboratory is in the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, and uh, we really focus on the space side. We are the expert laboratory in systems engineering, putting all these complex systems together and teaching students what that means and how to make them work ultimately in space. We give students here the opportunity to be hands-on with hardware. Through the REXIS project, where they're going to send their hardware to an asteroid through space for two and a half years, to SPHERES, where they're going to send their hardware up on station. These students are getting to work with the leaders in the aerospace industry on real hardware. Stay of the art technology with education is something we really need to marry. And we do that through our capstone class where students get to design new technology that surprisingly actually we've been able to fly in orbit on station and to interplanetary missions. We started this concept at the time truly innovative, the first ones to ever do it, CDIO, Conceive, Design, Implement, Operate. We began that in 1999. Since then, we've done the class about 10 times, and at least four of them have gone to space. You get to experience what it's really like uh, on a real high-profile NASA mission. You have to meet all those requirements that the other instruments uh, have to meet. And so that whole experience is really invaluable in teaching you what real aerospace engineering is like. My involvement with the uh, projects that we have here at DSSL goes all the way from the hardware level actually crimping cables, screwing on satellite parts, all the way up to writing code for it. From the start, I've been working with developing algorithms so that we can test our architecture in space. We interact with the astronauts live over video feed, and they unpackage our software, load it into the system, and run our tests. Being able to be a part of what is the whole picture going to look like, how are we going to develop the architecture, meet requirements, and I think these are really important skills that need to be developed and I think I can take into my future career. We, as a lab, have three main focus areas. On the one side, we work with computer models of how to develop space mission. Then we do a lot of ground test tests. We build things in the ground that we test in the laboratory. Proof of concept, can they work? The third step is things that go to space. For example, our Sphere satellites that are aboard the International Space Station. What Sphere is, is it is a test bed. MIT decided to use the space station not to test a complete mission, but to create a testing environment to do microgravity research in space. MIT has operated over 90 test sessions doing research that goes from what we call formation flight, having satellites move together in a coordinated fashion, making two satellites dock to each other autonomously, doing things like tether formation, when there's a string between the satellites and they're flying together, keeping that tether under tension. The SPHERES program began at the MIT Space Systems Laboratory as a class in 1999. In 2006, it got up to the space station. In 2010, NASA and the DOD made the SPHERES part of the ISS National Laboratory, making it truly a facility for everybody beyond MIT. REXIS is an X-ray instrument that's on the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft. The OSIRIS-REx spacecraft is going to explore this asteroid Bennu. NASA has put a, a little bit of money aside and said, let's see if universities can come up with a good instrument idea. And we started developing the REXIS instrument back in 2012. 
Rexus is going to look at the asteroid in the X-ray regime and tell us what the asteroid is made out of. So does it have iron, sulfur, or magnesium in the regolith, which is the dirt that's on the outside of the asteroid? I started in Rexus when Rexus was part of the undergrad capstone class, and really the experience that I got in that class was so exciting that I decided to continue on uh, on Rexus for both my master's and now my PhD work. On the Rexus project, students did everything. We designed Rexus, we designed the test program, we implemented the test program, we physically built the hardware, as well as contributing to the scientific analysis of our data. As an X-ray spectrometer, we'll be the first instrument to get an, a look at the X-ray spectra that comes off the asteroid, which gives us unique insight into the elemental composition of the asteroid. And so we're getting data that no one's ever gotten before. The SPHERES program has educated several thousand students from all the way as young as 11 years old. We made a competition that is based on the students programming a player for an autonomous satellite. The best players in simulation get to send their code up to the space station. Students can say, I can send things to space. I can send my software to space. Space Systems Lab and Star Lab are in a nice sweet spot. We work on missions that are small enough where, where we can hold them all in our, in our hands and in our heads, but they're impactful and they fly. It's constantly humbling to be around faculty members that are really excellent at what they do, whether they're NASA chief technologists or former secretaries of the Air Force. Just being able to learn from these people day to day, make Aero Astro at MIT what it is. All my life, when I was a kid or throughout undergrad, I always thought of MIT as being like this super cool place in which cutting edge research was done. Now that I'm here, I can actually feel that your research can have a tremendous impact on the world.